From the campus studios of Sarlan University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello, all you people out there in podcast land, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. I am sitting here, as usual, with my dear friend Roger Charlton. Hello, oh. Roger. Hello, Peter. And I want to know now from Roger, because he promised last time, how do parliamentary elections in Great Britain work? Because I don't really get that. It seems a little bit complicated here and there. Yeah, I think we should just take a look at elections to the central parliament of the UK, which people normally refer to as Westminster, okay. the Westminster Parliament. That's that's, where it, but that's, that's not the official name. It's debatable what the official name is, I think. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> One of many peculiarities of, of Britain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we know where it's sitting. How do people get in there? Right. First of all, the number of people elected mm-hmm. is far too many to be accommodated in the chamber of the House of Commons. So they camp out in front? <laughs> <laughs> this is why if you see scenes on television, as you may, yes. sometimes these things are broadcast in other countries, you may notice that it's quite a small room. Mm-hmm. Some people are seated, but yes. quite a lot of people are standing there and perhaps waving their arms frantically trying to get attention. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. It's a very strange thing that uh, after World War II, when Parliament was reconstructed, they rebuilt it just as it had been before. No bigger. Mm -hmm. So it's still too small for the number of people. How many are there, do you know? Well, the number is not actually fixed. It's around 650. Okay. Yeah. And how are they elected? Well, the whole country, the whole of the United Kingdom, remember that's England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Mm -hmm. is divided up into voting districts. We call them constituencies. Okay. And each of those elects one person to the House of Commons, that is, to the Central Parliament. Um, Does that person have to have the absolute majorities, meaning 50% or more? Not at all. That person is the one that just gets more votes than any of the other candidates. So theoretically, you could be elected with, say, 30% of the popular vote? That's, uh, That's quite normal. That's normal? Yeah. Oh! Uh Depending on how many candidates stand in that constituency, in that voting district. But that means even if you're a front bencher, meaning a person who is very important in your party, you don't have a sure seat? It doesn't mean you don't have a sure seat, but it does mean that you can never be absolutely sure of being re-elected. We, Mm. We call them safe seats and marginal seats. Okay. And the status of seats can change. It's not something that is fixed. And are the systems the same all over the country? Say, is there any difference for Northern Ireland as opposed to England? Other levels of administration with different systems, different electoral systems. Mm -hmm. But I think that's that's another topic. Mm -hmm. For the House of Commons, it is it's called quite simply the simple majority system. Simple majority system. Because that's all you need. You don't need an absolute majority, just a simple majority. One more vote than and the next guy. Number two. Uh-huh. Yeah. But that also means that uh, the person who has maybe a big, a huge majority, that, that the party that has a huge majority, does not necessarily need to have a huge majority all over Great Britain. That's right. It's not representative. The parties that benefit from the system are the big parties. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons that the system has operated for so long. On the other hand, you know, me as a German, that sounds pretty unfair to me because let's say you have a party that has, I don't know, 40% of the popular vote, but they have 60% or even more of the seats. I think that's possible. I think the cases you need to look at are the smaller parties. Uh The Liberal Democrats are not small, but they're not as big as the two big parties. And they, the Liberal Democrats, have achieved 25% of the popular vote Mm -hmm. and still ended up with 20 or 30 out of the 650 seats at Westminster. Don't don't you guys feel that's revolting in a way? I mean, don't the Liberal Democrats just clamor at every election that this is unfair? Well, they, not surprisingly, (laughs) would like to change the system. (laughs) And the others don't. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. But having constituencies with one member mm -hmm. voted locally has the advantage that any citizen of the UK who has a problem mm -hmm. knows I can go to my MP. The MP is there mm -hmm. several days a week or a month. Mm -hmm. And you can go along and you can say, look, I have this problem. Can you help? And, and, and he will actually... Regardless of party allegiance, uh -huh. that local member of parliament will try to help, if at all possible. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I, I would never go to my representative. No. Um, there's another chamber, though, isn't yeah. there? That's um, either on the way out or it's in the process of reform, depending on which party you belong to. Could you so just say one or two words about that one? The House of Lords, mm -hmm. which traditionally was huge, I mean like 12 or 1300 members, is now much smaller mm -hmm. because they got rid of most of the hereditary lords, the mm -hmm. ones who inherited a title. From and their daddy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You inherit a title and therefore a seat in the Lords. That's all over now. Uh -huh. There are just 92 of those people left uh -huh. for a transitional period, which has already gone on for several years. Okay. And the rest are life peers. They are appointed for their own lifetime, mm -hmm. and there is no right handed down to their offspring. And, and do they vote on laws too? They do. They very often amend the okay. ideas that come from the House of Commons. They do valuable work. Mm -hmm, discussing mm -hmm. in greater depth some of the more important matters. But wow, a seat for life. That's yeah. a long time. <laughs> that is very different from the United States, but I'll tell you about that in our next podcast. I'd be glad to hear it. Okay, let's say goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.